Hi everybody and welcome to the Truck King YouTube channel. We have a treat for you today. Sitting beside me is a beautiful Airstream trailer. Now Airstream is one of the most classic old school brands in the travel trailer world. But this isn't about the trailer. This video is about what we're towing it with and there is nothing old school about this. This right here is a Tesla. It's the smallest model they make, the Tesla Model 3. And in this video, we're gonna meet the man who put this rig together. We'll talk about what you need to tow with your Tesla Model 3. And then of course, we'll tow that Airstream and we'll talk about how this car tows that trailer. What are we waiting for? Let's do it. The Tesla Model 3 is available in three different forms. This is the mid-trim level, the long-range all-wheel drive model. According to Tesla, range for this car comes in at 322 miles or 518 kilometers. The run from 0 to 60 happens in 4.4 seconds, top speed is pegged at 145 miles per hour, and the car tips the scales at 4,032 pounds. The dual motor long range Model 3 sells for $64,990 here in Canada and $40,690 in the US. Now we're going to meet Andy Thompson, owner of Can-Am RV Centre just outside of London, Ontario and the man responsible for setting up this Model 3 towing rig. Andy has been towing with cars for years and honestly he's forgotten more than I've ever known about towing. So let's meet Andy now and find out all about this Model 3 setup. So we over the years we've learned to look at things like the type of suspension a vehicle has, its balance, tire and wheel sizes, all the different factors that go into how it's going to tow a trailer. Uh, one of the things we've learned over the years is tow ratings have very little to do with how well a vehicle tows. Uh, you can buy horrible, terrible tow vehicles with high tow ratings. You can buy vehicles with little or no tow rating that tow and work extremely well. So we look at all the factors that go into the vehicle, not an arbitrary number that's been pulled out of the air. So the, um, so the Tesla was just a, a continuation. I, I didn't think they were really viable. I didn't think the range would ever work, but we kept doing Model Xs for people. And I was pretty impressed how well they towed. The Model X uh, does have a 5,000 pound tow rating and a 5,000 pound, unfortunately, just a weight carrying hitch for it. But on a smaller, like a 22 footer, so that, that works quite well. The, um, I was driving to Florida last fall and I got thinking about it. I went, you know, the Model 3 is so much more efficient than the Model X. I could probably tow a good sized trailer if I made it more efficient and still get decent range out of it. And I thought I could probably get 100 miles, and, but then I'd have to charge for an hour. And I thought, well, that'd be a real pain in the neck. But the more I thought about it, I thought, well, with a gas car going fast, you know, all you do is five or 600 miles in a day. And at the end of the day, you're beat, you're tired from doing it. Well, so if I poke along in the right lane at 90 kilometers an hour for two hours, I'm going to do 100 miles easy. Worst case scenario, it's going to take an hour to charge, probably less than that. So, but worst case, I'm going to do 100 miles every three hours, but it's going to be a very relaxing three hours. And while the car is charging, instead of having to wait in a coffee shop or sit in the car, I can go in the Airstream, I can have lunch, I can lay down and have a nap if I want. And so I could probably do that five or six times in a day and still do a five, 600 mile a day towing the, towing the trailer. So that's, uh, that's our theory behind it. I was going to take it out to Denver this summer to the Airstream rally. Of course, COVID kind of killed that. So I haven't actually done a 500 mile day yet with it. I've done lots of couple of hundred mile trips sort of thing, but I haven't tested that theory just yet. <laughs> So the a typical hitch is just fastening the end of the subframe or the end of the frame of a vehicle. The way we hitches were made in the 60s, they went way up underneath the head of the gas tank and we still basically do that today. So this bar here goes across and over here it's fastening on the ends of the subframe where the bumper supports are, which is a fairly solid part of the chassis. This piece here goes up through here and it fastens onto the rear suspension cradle which is of course fastened into several parts of the body so that spreads that load. Like get out traffic in the house. Um. 
So you can remind me now, how heavy is the trailer we're pulling? This is about 6,000. About 6,000 pounds, okay. And yeah, I mean, that was just incredibly smooth and obviously the beauty of electric motors, right? Yeah. All that torque. Yeah. And it's instant, so you just step <laughs> on it and it goes. You don't have to wait for a turbo to spool or a transmission to shift. It's just... It's right there. It's right there. Huh. You know, part of what an airstream... The beauty of an Airstream is the center of gravity is very low, and so is this one. So it feels so good. That's yeah. crazy. Yeah, I think that, uh, That's really impressive. So I think this is a 60 kilometer an hour ramp speed, and we're running 100 without any any trouble at all. Wow. And, it, uh, and then in terms of sway, I mean, is the most important thing for sway that the EQ hitch back there, or is that also just how you have the hitch set up in well, the car? Well, we've got sway controls as well, but the weight distribution is part of it. Yeah. And, uh, because I think that's what maybe people would be nervous about. Um, do you know what the wheelbase is on the car? Because people might say the trailer would be longer than the wheelbase should allow. You know? Well, what we look at is the rear overhang as a percentage of the wheelbase. Okay. So you can have a short wheelbase if you have a short overhang. Ah, interesting. What you don't want is a short wheelbase and a long, long overhang. overhang. Gotcha. And that's, that's a better number to look at than just the uh, Straight wheelbase. Straight wheelbase. But, um, yes, there's nobody around us here right now. So you see, I can do a very quick lane change with this, wow. even over that crown of the road. Yeah. And it just sits there. There's it feels no... rock solid behind you. Yeah. And the uh... so a good car like this, doing a handling test like through the slalom cones and things, we can go faster with the airstream on the back than we actually can with the uh, with a lot of pickup trucks and tall SUVs by themselves. Wow. And sure. that's just center of gravity. You know, it's. Uh, once you get that weight up so high, it's you're not going to turn it back. Huh. So here's the camera system. So you get the straight backup cam, and then you get the side cams looking down the side of the trailer. Although, I mean, they're not ex particularly wide because they're actually on the body of the car. So the side cams don't necessarily show you all the way back down the trailer. Yeah, it feels so solid. I mean... Obviously, you're not surprised by it, but I'm just amazed at the lack of sway. Like, it yes. just feels just absolutely solid. And now, are you able to set the level of the regenerative braking? Like, can you make it brake harder or, or uh, softer for it's, you? Or? It's on the hardest setting now. Gotcha. You can make okay, it good to uh, know. Less, uh, less aggressive. Okay. No, it's actually, I was going to comment that it's not too aggressive. Like, it's a nice, a nice yeah. feeling. Well, and you see, the further up you let the gas, the more there is. So, you could actually control gotcha. how much it's... Uh, yeah, see, because just naturally I just let off, you know? That's yeah. just what you would do in a gas vehicle. But I hear you, rather than letting off, you're better to yeah. just kind of raise and up And you little. see there when it's green, you're actually putting power back into the batteries. Uh, gotcha. Yeah. All right, Dad, so I've already had my go. Um, it's a very different towing experience, but super solid i mean it's unbelievable to me how good this thing felt but you're over there now and you got your butt sensors turned on so what do you feel it's uh this is something completely new to me yeah first of all i feel like my ass is dragging on the ground yes we're so used to pickup trucks but wow is that trailer ever connected mm. like it feels like it's part of the vehicle mm -hmm. it's uh it's i've never felt anything quite like this and that's Andy's sort of whole ethos is, you know, just hook up your, your hitch correctly and make sure you're spreading that weight around and cars can be great tow vehicles. And in this case, he's absolutely right. And this is a great experience too. There's no noise here, no engine, no transmission. So you hear the hitch back there. You hear it coming around corners. Every little noise you hear, you hear the, the road noise and the tire noise more. Um, it's not a bad thing. It's just something you have to get used to when you're in a regular ICE car. You're just so used to hearing engine. No, the torque is amazing. I've always known. I mean, the torque on an electric motor is 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 not comparable to a gas engine because it doesn't need to build RPMs. It yeah. has torque. It has torque from the second it turns its first revolution. Yeah. So I mean, I'm getting that. I mean, I always knew that just uh, understanding the technology of it but this is really the first time i've felt it and particularly with this is a 27 foot trailer it's uh this is is definitely a new experience for me mm -hmm. but damn it feels good <laughs>
All right, and now we're gonna do what every travel trailer owner generally fears or always thinks about anyways, merge onto the highway. We're merging onto the 401 and uh, we're gonna feel how this thing does. So first of all, in this corner, it just feels so good. Like I can't help but laugh because of how tight the handling is here. It's uh, it's wild. I don't even know that trailer's back there. It's wild, absolutely wild. I keep looking in the mirror and, and surprising myself and going, oh, there's a trailer, a trailer there. <laughs> and of course, you know, we pull on, there's the big rig. And this thing just has power, more power, more power, more power. <laughs> the projected range just shot down to 59 kilometers. <laughs> okay. I kind of had my foot in it. I know, of course, but that's that's the amazing thing, right? So if you start to slow down now, and we get a little more consistent, that range will shoot back up. And, and that's the beauty of it, is, is real time, you can really watch that range. And uh, and according to Andy, it's, it's dead on accurate. It's not like a gas car where, you know, the last 40 kilometers you're kind of ifing, you know, you might have a bit more, maybe not. And this thing, it's got exactly what it says it's got. Yeah, I said I love these graphics, the way they go up and down. It reminds me of my stock portfolio. <laughs> oh, you're getting range back. As you slow down, it's slowly coming back. And that's it for the highway experiment. But man, yeah, even at those high speeds, that was 125 kilometers an hour. And there's no sway. Like, just having that hitch set up properly, having the right EQ hitch, man, super cool. Well, everyone, that is it for this video. Now, why don't you please go below, leave us a comment, let us know what you think of this Model 3. If you want to get in touch with Andy. We're Can-Am uh, RV Center, and we're in London, Ontario. Um, our phone number is 866-226-2678, and canmrv.ca is our, our website. And there's a whole bunch more towing stuff on our website, videos of the racetrack and things like that, that you can check out if you like. Perfect. Okay, thank you, Andy. Oh, you're welcome. As always, don't forget to hit like, hit subscribe, and then come back to Truck King to see what we're testing next. See ya.